One key aspect to good, to good leadership might be indicated by perhaps the way you sleep at night. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but there are those who sleep at night with all the lights off and there has to be perfect silence, and they actually lose sleep if that doesn't happen. Say they're traveling on the road and they forget their favorite pillow. My wife is one of those that travels with her pillow, even if she's just going to one of the kids' house to spend the night or across the globe, that pillow goes with her. It gets shoved in the suitcases like you wouldn't believe because it has to go. Then there are those people who could sleep standing up on the side of the road and it wouldn't bother them at all. It seems like there's an earthquake on my camera right now because I'm actually at my daughter's house and she has a cat named Mario. I call him meow -yo just to irritate the grandkids, but he seems to be fascinated with my tripod and he's using it to scratch his head. So that's why you see all the wiggling in the video. My point about sleeping it goes right to the cat. It really does. How often do we find ourselves in a leadership position where the environment isn't ideal? This is, this is not what I was planning. I, I didn't think it was going to work out quite like this. And as a result, we just lose it. We can't maintain control. We can't continue to lead where we want to lead because we have less than ideal circumstances. Do you have to have the white noise in the background to be able to sleep? Do you have to have all the right stuffed animals and all the right environment around you? I mean, what happens if the unplanned happens? See, good leadership means I know where my peace comes from so that I can have peace in the midst of mayhem, which may happen here at any minute because there's a four-year-old and a six-year-old in that room right there uh, sleeping. But it's about the time of day for them to get up and get ready for school and get on the bus and go. So at any minute, mayhem may break loose. At any minute, the unplanned could happen. And it's really easy in life to acknowledge those moments and then freak out about them. It's real easy to stress out and go, I, I just can't handle this. It's too easy to let go of the objectives. Too easy to forget that we have an agenda. We're here for a reason. There's something we're supposed to be accomplishing. And when we let go of those objectives and agendas because something was not perfect, then we might find ourselves starting over again. We might find ourselves trying to adjust the end. I, I love the way Paul Martinelli, one of the leaders from our John Maxwell team and the president of the John Maxwell team, he says, often we, as an organization or as individuals, we start off at the beginning of the year in January. I'll do it this way so it's left to right to you. We start off at the beginning of the year in January with our goals for December, we know exactly what they're gonna be and somewhere along the way, we find that we're not getting close to them. So rather than redouble our efforts or change our focus or really pour more energy into reaching these lofty goals by December, we lower our goals. We bring down the standards. We readjust what we think we will accomplish because what we thought we could do in January ran into mayhem in February. It ran into disaster by March. By April and May, the wheels had come off and here we found ourselves in the spring and the year's nearly half over and we're not even 10% of the way to our goals. So we just kind of push those goals back a little bit. We suppress our anxiety, we suppress our excitement, we suppress our enthusiasm and we redirect our vision because things weren't perfect. Listen, <laughs> things are never gonna be perfect. Whatever the ideal scenario you worked out for your leadership plan, whatever goals you have for your business, they are going to run into obstacles. In fact, chances are the more lofty your goals, the more obstacles you're going to have. Life has this way of testing us to see, A, if we want it bad enough, and B, if we're really ready, if we're the kind of person that we need to be to reach the goals that we've established. Now, I have one goal today that is a pretty major goal. And that is I've got about five hours worth of driving from here in North Little Rock to actually get to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. In Nashville, I'll arrive at the National Religious Broadcasters uh, Convention, the annual convention with tens of thousands of people. Um, President, excuse me, Vice President Mike Pence is speaking today at one o'clock. You have to get through security at 11. I'm probably not going to drive that fast. It's about a five hour drive. So I'll get there and set up the booth instead. And when everybody else comes to that meeting, then our exhibit booth will be ready for them. That's my goal today. 
That's not a major lofty goal, but it includes a lot of small accomplishments along the way. Getting out of the door on time, getting in the car on time, not getting stuck in traffic, not getting lost. All of those are little tiny accomplishments. In your life, it's exactly the same. Let me close with this. As you look <clears throat> from January to December at your lofty goals, and you realize along the way, there's been a little mayhem, there's been a little chaos, there's been a little confusion, there's been a little misdirection, there's been a couple of things that didn't get achieved. I'd be willing to bet, though, there have been some of those little goals along the way that you have accomplished. Have you taken time to celebrate them? Have you, have you taken time to look back and say, I got a good night's sleep even if I wasn't at home. I, I'm fully rested and, and ready to go for the day, even if I slept in my car last night. Are you ready to say, no matter what the conditions are, I'm the same person and I'm gonna plow forward because I wouldn't have established these goals if they weren't worth achieving. I wouldn't be pressing toward that mark if that mark wasn't worth reaching. If you will hold in your mind the image that you've already established for yourself, if you've got that vision and you're holding on to it, that vision will serve you and it will serve you well. But it will take determination and it will take diligence. And then you'll have some dignity to give away. Stay disciplined. Hold on to that attitude of excellence. Hold on to that picture of where you're going. And understand that even in the mayhem, there's peace. I'm Jay Lauren Norris, and you've been watching Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.